Okay, it's me. That's right, I'm filling in for... Don't fill in, you're not filling in for nobody. I'm what? I'm not filling in? No. Lenny says I'm not filling in. I'm here because I own the place. How about that? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm here because I own the place. So what we do now is we just wait for our wonderful chat room for the sound to come through. And it looks like it is. Hello, sound. Sound is good, everybody. And we will get started right away. Of course, you would think that we wouldn't have a lot to talk about, but you know we do. We do have a lot to talk about because... We always have something to talk about. So this All-Star break, that doesn't mean one bit of difference to us over here. We talk baseball, fantasy baseball, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And that is true. 365 days a year, including Christmas, every day of Hanukkah, Passover, Yom Kippur, and all of the holidays that we love to observe in this household We are the Melnick household, and it is good morning to everybody, Wednesday, July 17th. It is 9 o'clock, so welcome aboard, everybody, and uh, let's just go ahead and say hi. Hi to Daniel the Hulkster, Chris JP, Chris from Cambridge, Captain Danny, SM King Turd, great to see you, and of course, my biggest fan and supporter, it's Lenny here, Triple Play is here, Unholy is here, Owens is here, great to see you, Owens, we love having you around, Data Premier, Timothy My Hooker, Zelmo, where's Mal Pal, he must be running late today, I said Chris from Cambridge, and speaking of Chris from Cambridge, he wanted to point out something about uh, Yasiel Puig, and you know what? I'm a big fan of Yasiel Puig, and uh, I hope he, I doubt he'll ever come back because the Wokesters decided he wasn't worthy of playing in this country just like they always do, but he's going to be 34 at the end of the year. Hasn't seen a major league pitch in five years. He is in Mexico, and he's. I think he's just having a great time down there, too. Why the hell would he want to come back to this nonsense? He's hitting 324 with a 427 on base percentage, 13 homers, 35 RBIs in 49 games. Thank you to Chris from Cambridge for giving us an update on the wonderful and talented Yasiel Puig. Now, it is not a wacky Wednesday. This is also from Chris. Without a birthday, so we do want to say happy birthday to Bobby Thigpen. 57 saves and 88 innings for El Bobo. Happy birthday. How old is he? Oh, 61 today. So there you go. Now, let's get going. I'll be having some sips on my coffee. Everybody, welcome aboard. What do you think of MLB players going to play in the Olympics? Should they do it? I guess they don't do it because do the Olympics fall, right? The Summer Olympics, they're right in the middle of the season. I can only imagine that it would not be a good idea for MLB players to play in the Olympics. But if we want the best of the best representing our country, we should have them go and play. Good morning to Rotorius. Good morning to everybody. Leonard is here. He's in the chat room, so give him a shout out and say hello. He'll be chatting with the, all of y'all. All right. The American League wins the All Star game. They won 10 out of the last 11 All Star games. What do you think? We have a home run derby. Do you think we should have a skills competition in baseball? I want lots of interaction in the chat room today. It makes my whole day to see everybody talking to each other. Now let's get going. Wake up now, Mal Pal, Tina, way to go. All right. How about a skills competition? Throwing, catching, defense, offense. What about like a, one of those, what do they call those things where you run around and you go do a whole bunch of different things like you grab the bars and then you like uh, do the barrels and you, you know, and, and then you tag your friend and Obstacle courses. Maybe they should have some obstacle courses in the MLB skills competition. Uh, yeah, Turd brings up the fact that MLB would have to have an Olympics break. And maybe it wouldn't be a long time, too, because, you know, they go through um, rounds and rounds and rounds. And then, you know, 
you have to eliminate a bunch of different teams as you go to get to the gold medal. So it could take a while, but if you did want the best of the best, representing the wonderful country of the United States, that's right, you would uh, need it. Need it from the MLB. I mean, you could send Ellie Judge. You could send, I mean, Otani could play for us even now, right? Oh, the MLBPA is talking the 2028 Olympics. Interesting that you bring that up. That's a great tidbit, Danny. Captain Danny. That's why you're the captain, okay? All right. And Malpal says we need pro wrestling in the Olympics. Then he'd watch. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be hard to judge, right? I don't know. Okay. All underrated. T- Here's We talked about Brandon Nimmo. Is Laura here yet? Hopefully, Laura will show up soon. She likes to show up as soon as I start talking about her. The underrated team from all of the first half in MLB baseball. Tell me what you think of this underrated team. And no, Brandon Nimmo is not on it. Although we think that Brandon Nimmo is pretty underrated, especially when it comes to the fantasy value. Let's talk about some underrated players we can build a team up. And if you guys have a suggestion at a position, put the position and the player in the chat room and we'll see if he's on the the team. There you are, Laura. I love you. Okay, great to see you, Laura. Wonderful. Okay. Let's see. The first, the besides Brandon Nimmo, we have Logan O'Hop at catcher, Christian Walker, who we talk a lot about on this show at first base, Bryce Terang at second base, Josh Smith, who I definitely picked up wherever I could. This guy is qualified at lots of positions. I believe he's a Texas Ranger. Correct me if I'm wrong, turd, but he plays third base for the all underrated team. Shortstop, how about, have you heard this name? Mason Wynn, underrated shortstop. And of course, who we're going to talk about a little more later is Brenton Doyle in the outfield. Also, Alec Burleson in the outfield. Spencer Steer, now I don't know how underrated Spencer Steer is, but uh, definitely glad to see that he's on this underrated team, which means that he's playing decent at least because I have him on multiple teams. And I drafted him specifically because he plays all over the infield and he is a pretty good player. And I thought, you know, for what he was going in fantasy draft, he was a good value. Glad to see that he's on the underrated team. Ryan O'Hearn as DH. Jack Flaherty, is he underrated? I don't know. What do you consider underrated, dude, who wrote this list? Eric Fetty. I love it. Eric Fetty, underrated pitcher for the White Sox. Another underrated pitcher, Gavin Stone. How about Brian Hudson, relief pitcher? Hunter Gaddis, relief pitcher. How about Justin Martinez, relief pitcher? How about those? Oh, SM King Turd brings up Mark Vientos. Excellent spot. Third base. King Hap here physically, but not mentally. We don't need you. We don't love you for your brain. Okay? Or do we? Because the other option is to love you for your body. And I don't think that's an appropriate thing to say from a woman who's married to, to a man who's also married, right, King Hap? I don't know. If we don't love you for your brains, it's got to be your beauty. All right. What about the uniforms last night? Were they hideous? What about the lady that sang the Star Spangled... What about the lady that sang the National Anthem the other day? She came out and admitted she was drunk. Dude, I give her a lot of credit for saying that. But, I mean... Do drunk people sing way worse than sober people? I love singing when I'm drinking. I know I probably never sing good anyway, but I definitely think my my pitch and my sound is much better when I'm drinking. (laughs) She probably thought that too, but anyway, she came out, she said she was drunk, and she wasn't trying to... uh, mock the national anthem or anything i guess she was just kind of bored and she went out she had a few drinks that's just strange though that you would get drunk before you go out and sing the national anthem a three-time grammy winning country singer getting drunk wow and then she comes out and admits it 
But I agree with Malpal. You know what? This is why they have production studios. And it is a big difference a lot of times between these singers, how they really sound and how they are after the production studio gets their voices all fixed up. And, you know, if you think about that aspect of it and you think, well... Would she be more embarrassed to say that she actually can't sing or that she was drunk? So, bless you, Leonard. Maybe she just felt like she couldn't really tell anybody she she can't really sing without the production. So, she uh, decided to tell everybody she was drunk. I don't know. But that news came out yesterday. All right. So, now we are talking about the American League winners. They've won 10 of the last 11 All-Star Games. Bruce Bochy is the second manager to win All-Star Game in both leagues. Who was the first manager to win All-Star Games in both leagues? And the question and answer period starts right now. Bruce Bochy is the second manager to win an All-Star Game in both leagues. Who was the first? And I'll give you some time while I move on to Paul Skeens and his beautiful girlfriend, Livy. <laughs> He made his all-star debut not only as an an all-star, but he got to start after that fantastic outing he had. He's That fantastic outing, I should say, basically his whole career so far is a fantastic outing. La Russa is right. You got it, turd. I knew I could always rely on you, right? Turd. It is La Russa, Tony La Russa and Bruce Bochy, the only two managers to win an all-star game for both leagues. Sparky Anderson, I was wondering where you were, unholy. Sparky Anderson, no, but good guess. Okay, all-star debut for Paul Skeens. He pitched one scoreless innings, and he did generate some very ugly swings from the best American League hitters. He ended up with one inning pitched and one walk, but he didn't strike any batters out, it looks like. Um, He threw 16 pitches, 11 of them were strikes. I'm glad to see that Max Freed got in, Logan Webb got in, Imanaga, Hunter Green, um, Christopher Sanchez, Robert Suarez. I mean, there was a lot. I, there was a totally a lot. So we talk about the National League. There was one, two, three, tw- uh, 11 pitchers for the National League, and there was a whole bunch for the American League. And even then, not all of the guys that got to go got to pitch or got to play. And it, it's an interesting point to bring up that some of these hitters got three at bats and some of them got no at bats. But I know the Angels fans were specifically feeling dissed. I mean, every team has to have one representative, right? And so I guess those fans, they expect their one representative to get some playing time. And Angels fans apparently were just waiting and waiting for their only representative, which was Tyler Anderson, to get to pitch, and he never got in the game. So, of course, the Angels uh, Twitter is crying today over it. All right. Unholy says that when Sparky was in his late 30s, he looked like he was 60. I just hope that doesn't happen to me. Shohei Otani, three-run homer off Tanner Houck, gave the National League a 3 to nothing lead in the third inning, but of course the American League came right back and scored three runs in the third inning to tie the game. Also, it will forever be known as Pirates rookie sensation Paul Skeen's coming out party. Is that even allowed to say anymore, a coming out party? Is that is that kind of... Is that not politically correct at this point? I don't know. It seems like everything else is not politically incorrect. So, coming out party for Paul Skeens. Shohei Otani once again reminded everybody yesterday that the All-Star Game, that he's still the greatest player in the world. And also, Jaron Duran, uh, breakout season, as we all know, his storybook season just added a new chapter when he became the MVP of the All-Star Game. Jaron Duran... Uh, didn't start the game. Judge started in center field. And then Jaron Duran, he had two at-bats, two RBIs, a 500 batting average. And as I mentioned, he won um, the MVP and the American League won the game 5-3. to three. Duran 
joined Hall of Famer Carl Yastrzemski as the only Boston Red Sox outfielders to ever win the All-Star MVP award. Still, even after pitching just the first inning of the game without a strikeout, everyone was still talking about Paul Skeens. No, they weren't. They were talking about his girlfriend. <laughs> Okay, he arrived into town on Sunday with his famous girlfriend, Livy Dunn. She's a gymnast, by the way, if you're interested in knowing. And left with everybody at Globe Life Field, be believing that the All-Star Game could be an annual trip. Jaron Duran becomes the first Red Sox to homer in an All-Star Game since Adrian Gonzalez in 2011. His two-run homer gave the American League a 5-3 lead in the fifth inning. Otani's home run was the first one by a Dodger in an All-Star game since who? Who was the last Dodger to hit a homer in an All-Star game? Let's go, Captain Danny. And everybody else can chime in too, but I'm pretty sure Captain Danny should get this one. Otani's home run was the first one by a Dodgers in an All-Star game since who? You got it, Mal Pal. You got it. Mike Piazza, 1996. Captain Danny Stinks. <laughs> okay. Now, Otani made history also. And does this guy make history every time he steps up to the plate? He made history last night by joining Barry Bonds as the only National League players in All-Star Game history with three or more RBIs, a home run, and a walk. But his team did lose another close game, 5-3. to three. Another hero of the All-Star Game was Emmanuel Classe. He closed it out for the American League, earned his save, right? And Mason Miller got the win. You know, we started the season just talking about him every day. And what is he doing? He's still throwing 104 miles an hour. Now, okay, doing it in the All-Star game. He got the win. He earned straight A's in his one inning for the American League. He not only struck out two, but his 103.6 mile an hour pitch is the fastest pitch ever in an all-star game. Obviously, we don't know 100%, but since the pitch tracking era, Mason Miller earns the fastest pitch in an all-star game, which comes to no surprise, right, Laura? And... That was actually, and he, 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 the, <laughs> let me start that sentence over. Sometimes you get tongue tied. Let me have a sip of coffee first. All right. The 103.6 mile an hour pitch was the very next pitch after striking out Otani with a wipeout slider. So his pitches, his all-star game fastballs, 101, 101, 102, 104, 102, 102, 103, and 102. And yes, I could have shortened that out and just let you know that out of eight pitches, every single one of them was above 100. All right. All right. Daniel the Hulkster Ferrara. Your Facebook page entertains me. Where's Tommy Johnson? Is he here today? He is. Hello to Tommy Johnson. Hope you're doing well. I wanted an update for you and you're walking to see how your shoulder's doing. Yes. Speaking of Facebook pages, you know Tommy Johnson has one of the nicest, most positive Facebook pages I've ever seen. And then Daniel's, Daniel's Facebook page is full of... Um, Humor, mostly humor and sports, humor and sports. Because, you know, if you're a fan of the White Sox, you got to find humor or your life is not very pleasing at the moment. All right. Is that Bauer? That's Bauer. I, I've seen that uh, meme before. Strange bird. It's true. He is unique, very different. But by the way, if we're going to talk about Bauer for a second... I think you guys are egging me on to talk about Bauer, right? Because you know I can't get through a show without giving an update. But here's an update for you. 
Nobody's teasing Paul Skeens with his unique warm-up workout with his that backpack that he wears and the way that he does his warm-up is very unique. Nobody's teasing him the way that they did to Bauer. They practically ran Bauer out of Arizona because they were so mean to him about the fact that he warmed up with his shoulders tube and that he was just different. Well, Paul Skeens does the same stuff. And at this point, I think we could safely say that Bauer was not an out. They treated him like an outcast, but he was just ahead of his time. And I knew it. You knew it. We all knew it. The media vultures did not give him any credit, so that's that. Now, moving forward to Cal Raleigh, who we would say, and even though we have Logan O'Hop on the underrated all-star team list, O'Hop is not as good as Cal Raleigh, and I'll tell you why. Cal Raleigh does, he's probably not going to hit 270 for the rest of the season, but he leads catchers in home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, and plus, take a look at, this is not fantasy relevant, but look at his defensive stats and his numbers in high leverage situations. He's probably going to win a gold glove this year, so what do you think about that when I say that Cal Raleigh is better than Logan O'Hop? Also, you had the all-star cast on there doing the announcing yesterday with Derek Jeter, A-Rod, and Big Poppy. How fun is that, right? Well, Jeter is the only one with a realistic World Series prediction, okay? Jeter predicts that the Phillies beat the Orioles in the World Series. All right, that makes sense. Of course, you had, and then you have two from the homers, which would be A-Rod, the former Yankee, says that the Yankees will beat the Dodgers in the World Series. And Poppy, the homer for the Red Sox, says that the Red Sox are going to beat the Phillies in the World Series. Give me a break. We know you're homers, but can you give us a realistic prediction, please, A-Rod and Poppy? Jeter did. He said the Phillies will beat the Orioles. That's realistic. Now, what about if we told you in March that David Fry would have an RBI in the All-Star game? Would you have said that you thought that was crazy talk? Yes, you would. Now, David Fry got two at-bats as a pinch hitter, DH. He got one RBI and he hit 500. So, like I said, two at-bats is not that many. But Fry now has as many RBIs in the All-Star game as he had in his last 52 regular season plate appearances, and yes, that means David Fry has not been good, all right, lately. He hasn't had a good July at all. He was out of the lineup on Sunday for the uh, for the, the Guardians played Tampa Bay, and Fry was out. Now, he hit the bench on Sunday for the fourth time in the Guardians' past eight games, He's been very cold in July, going 3 for 28 with one RBI through 10 games. So if you're still just not really paying attention and you went out and picked up David Fry because he was hitting great and all, it's a rookie is a rookie is a rookie. So it's time to pull him out of the lineup if you have any other options at that position. All right. Now, also, the Yankees are the team... They've had five different players hit a home run in an all-star game since 2000. And then that is the most in the American League. But neither, I shouldn't say neither. I was going to say neither Judge or Judge hit a home run yesterday. Nobody, Nobody from the Yankees hit a home run yesterday. The only one that hit a home run for the American League was your boy, your MVP of the game, Jaron Duran. Do you want to hear who those players are, okay, that hit a home run in the All-Star game? You got Derek Jeter in 2001, Alfonso Soriano in 2002, Jason Giambi in 2003 against Billy Wagner, So you had 2001, 2002, and 2003. Each of those seasons, a Yankee hit a home run in the All-Star game. And then another Yankee didn't hit a home run in the All-Star game until 2018 when Aaron Judge did it. 
and he did it off of Max Scherzer. And then in 2022, Giancarlo Stanton hit a home run in the All-Star game against Tony Gonsolin. So there's your five Yankees. The most home runs by a team in the All-Star game since 2000. They sure started out the... the, the uh, what is it? Gen what is it? Since 2000, they started off the century strong. But they didn't make it past three years. So they still have the most home runs in an all-star game of any team. And that's that, right? So let me just go check out the chat room. And it's on fire. And we do love it. J.R. Mads, good morning. Great to see you. Tommy Johnson, Chris J.P. and his brother Zelmo. That's wonderful. And... um a-Rod is a weirdo. Take him off TV. Turd loves Conseco. And Conseco does wish everybody a good day except one guy. And that guy would be, as we all know, without him even having to say it, it's the it's the guy who threw everybody under the bus, A-Rod. That's right. So, uh... There's the Dusty Baker and Tony LaRusa spat. I remember it. Okay, that was pretty darn good. That was fun. And that doesn't happen anymore, but I wish it did because I love it. All right, Britton Doyle over his last 15 games, 352 batting average, 8 home runs, 15 RBIs, 1 stolen bases, 17.5% strikeout rate, and a 12.7% walk rate. 537 ISO. He's producing like an early round pick over the past month. So, you know, Brenton Doyle is this, I guess he's this month's David Fry, right? Uh, Lenny. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know why he does that, but. Jaron Duran homers in the All-Star game. Quickly becoming one of baseball's favorite players. Right, King Hap? Red Sox manager Alex Cora is cognizant of Boston's struggles against left-handed pitchers. He moved the righty-hitting Rob Refsnyder to lead off against Cole Reagans. And while Refsnyder got on base twice against Reagans, the left-hander stifled the rest of Boston's lineup, which was the second time in three games that the Red Sox were quelled by a lefty. Duran is the only one besides Ref Snyder hitting great against lefties. Even he's not even hitting great, okay, but he's still getting on base at a 313 clip against lefties, and he's batting better against righties, getting on base 336 percent of the time. Or 336 percentage. <sighs> okay. Now here we go. Jaron Duran is the fifth Red Sox player to win All-Star Game MVP. Tell me who the rest of them are, King Hap. Boston Paul is not here or what? Is Boston Paul here? You're not keeping track of the chat room, Leonard. Uh, I didn't see him. All right. Well, the other Red Sox fan, it's King Hap. Tell me who the other Red Sox players to win an All-Star MVP during the, the All-Star Game. Red Sox drafted D'Angelo Ortiz in the 19th round. And you know who that is? That is Big Poppy's kid. That's right. David Ortiz's son, D'Angelo Ortiz, is now a Red Sox drafted in the 19th round because we should give you a couple updates about the MLB draft that's taking place. He's going to have a lot of people rooting for him. Also, Manny's son gets drafted, okay? Manny Ramirez, an outfielder out of American Heritage School in Florida, was selected by the Angels also in the 17th round. And one more bit of information that you might want to go take a look if you're bored today and you want to read something. I'm going to go ahead and post this link in the chat room because, well, let me just get it highlighted here. One sec, copy, and we'll paste it in the chat room. If you guys want to go take a look at 
a cool article about an incredible story of this six foot six hitter, Lyle Miller Green, went from being born in Siberia to be drafted by the White Sox. Daniel, you might especially find interest in that. Great story about this kid being born in Siberia and being drafted by the White Sox. Now, what did you hear about this, Daniel? Is Nick Senzel signing with the White Sox? Or is that just a rumor? Great to see you, J.R. Matz and family. The whole Motzinger clan. Hope all is going well for you, kid. Okay, the Tigers, Colt Keith, since June 1st. We love him, finally, all right? And I doubt he's good enough to get me out of last place in some of my leagues. But, hey, I'll still leave him in there just in case. He's batting two seventy three with the three twenty six on base percentage, a one thirty one weighted runs created plus, seven home runs and two stolen bases with a 93.5% Z contact, which means in the zone. Since June 1st. Since June 1st. Thank you, Leonard. The Mariners are in no, uh, they're in first place and had no representation during the actual All Star game. As I mentioned earlier, the Angels got actually no representation in the All Star game. And Harper got three at bats, Turner got three at bats, and Cattell Marte got three at bats, but whatever. We're not counting at bats and crying over spilled cereal. Pete Alonzo was unable to join Ken Griffey Jr. as the only three-time home run derby winners in history. So it's still just Ken Griffey Jr. and that's it. Alonzo was eliminated in the first round of this year's derby after hitting only 12 homers. He's come up short three straight home run derbies now after he won two and. Well, he won it in 2019, and he won it in 2021. Basically, two years in a row when you consider the fact that there was no All-Star game in 2020. The first half of the MLB season is in the books. Here are the 10 storylines to follow as we enter the second half. Number one, the Royals announced that outfielder MJ Melendez has been placed on the 10-day injured list, but it's retroactive to July 15th. He has an ankle sprain. No corresponding move was announced because the Royals don't play again until Friday, and he departed the club's most recent game on Sunday after injuring himself running out a ground ball. And due to the off days, it's possible he could return after only missing a handful of games, but the team will likely provide more information about his expected absence in the days to come. It is unfortunate timing because MJ Melendez was really heating up after an awful first half. He was batting 181 in the first half until just then in July, he started batting 273 in 35 July plate appearance, but whatever momentum he had is now halted. Number one, will the offense heat up? It's no secret that offense in MLB is nearing historically low levels. Since 2008, first half league-wide WOBA is the lowest in that time span, yet even lower than 2021 at the peak of the sticky stuff. Are the summer months going to help? They usually do, so we'll see. Trade deadline. Who will people trade for Garrett Crochet? The guy is under contract through 2026. What will teams pay for Luis Robert? What will teams pay for Jazz Chisholm? Pitching is going to come at a premium. Elite closers like Carlos Estevez, Tanner Scott, and Pete Fairbanks. Which contender is willing to sell the farm to win this year? Which bubble teams will be buyers and sellers? Do you think any big prospects will be on the move? Number four. 
Here's a couple of teams losing their grip on the division as we could make sure that A-Rod and Big Poppy hear this. The Yankees and Orioles have struggled in the last month. The Yankees are 8-18 eight and 18, and the Orioles are 13-14 and 14, and we're kind of pleased that Eddie Heckman is not in the chat room being tortured by listening to how bad his Orioles are doing lately. He's on a cruise in Alaska, so we hope he's having a great time. Um, do and all, oh, but Big Poppy, yes, the Red Sox are white hot, eighteen and seven. All right, Seattle and Cleveland's offense is struggling as the Twins and Astros vie for the division lead. Also, teams surging. All three of the Red Sox, Astros, and Mets were five hundred or worse a month ago. Fast forward to today, and they all won 18 games in that span, and they're either in a playoff position or on the cusp of a playoff position. Number eight, American League Cy Young race, Garrett Crochet leads all pitchers in fan graphs war, but Tarek Skubal is the favorite to take home the hardware. His consistency is unmatched, but arms like Cole Reagans, Tanner Houck, uh, uh, George Kirby and uh, Logan Gilbert will keep Scooble on his toes. The American League Cy Young race is going to be fun. Number nine is NL Cy Young race, which is Chris Sale and Zach Wheeler have the volume and the results to run the table in the National League. But watch out for breakout arms like Christopher Sanchez and Hunter Green, who took the loss, by the way. Amongst other established veterans, such as one of my favorites, Logan Webb, Tyler Glassnow, and Sonny Gray. Two of my favorites are in those three. And don't forget about Livy's boyfriend, Paul Skeens. Also, the American League Rookie of the Year pool is headlined by two electric arms in Mason Miller and Luis Heal. American League rookie hitters have started slow. Will Wyatt Langford and Colt Keith have a second half to vault them into this conversation? Or perhaps a dark horse like Horowitz or Rice? The NL Rookie of the Year race is the chance to be very historic as stud rookies such as Shota Imanaga, Gavin Stone, Ortiz, Bush, Wynn, Mason Wynn, and Merrill, Jackson Merrill, have been stellar. But they pale in comparison to Livy's boyfriend, Paul Skeens, who is currently running away with the race. So, Paul Skeens and Paul Skeens for Rookie of the Year and for Cy Young? BS! I don't like that. I don't think that should be. Might as well give him MVP too, even though his team isn't going to make it. Love everybody. And we hope you have a wonderful day today. And we just can't thank you enough for coming every morning and joining us to talk some baseball, escaping the clown world that we live in to for just a good 45 minutes of your time every day. We consider you all our friends, and we're just really grateful that we have you guys to talk baseball every day and support us and support our chat room and support our community. Thank you, everybody, and we will see you again tomorrow.